Hi guys, this is Bob, N9KR. I thought we'd make a video on some improvements to our HW101 that may be of interest to some of you folks out there. It's actually three here that show up in the uh, in the video, and we're only going to probably talk about uh, one, which is this DDS VFO. These are all homebrew uh, enhancements, and they're all non uh, non-invasive modifications. We're not going to make any changes to our HW to our base HW101. So we have the DDS VFO, which we've talked about in other videos, and uh, we had to. It, it works great. We made some modifications to it to allow it to work successfully without birdies uh, with our HW101. Some nice features in that, including our receive incremental tune and uh, great accuracy, uh, digital accuracy, right down to uh, one one hertz. And uh, also, we've got our uh, K3NG uh, software-based. Uh, uh, Kier, CW Kier that we've talked about in other videos with a couple of additional enhancements. And our uh, L-Craft uh, designed and uh, homebrew uh, AF1 active audio filter. We're on uh, 20 meters here at the moment. Let's move in closer so we can get a better look at the DDS VFO. This is Arduino-based. Uh, I talked about this in several other previous videos. Homebrew um, core software was written by Ross Keating from TheLadderLine.com. And we've made a number of modifications specific to the HW101 for this version of the software. So there are uh, five different tuning step modes. <clears throat> show up on the screen right here right now we're at 10 Hertz which is relatively fine and that's great for CW I can find a signal here on 20 meters we could demonstrate it that's real quiet in the morning <clears throat> no nobody there's somebody okay <clears throat> So now we're on 10 hertz tuning. We can step through the various, uh, cycle through the five choices. There's one hertz, very fine. Cycle back around to 100k and then 10k and 1k and 100 hertz, and which works great for single sideband, and then uh, 10, 10 hertz for uh, CW. So this number here is actually uh, the number of hertz offset from a zero set point. So we can calibrate the software for each band and uh, it basically replaces the zero set function on the HW101 but it's obviously much more accurate so we can set it, it basically compensates for differences in heterodyne oscillator circuits in the HW101 and other circuitry changes and uh, once it's set per band it doesn't change it stays the same so whenever we change bands on the HW101 manually we'll go down to 40 meters here on the 101 we go ahead and we hit the band changed up here in the wrong direction. There's 40 meters there. Hit the enter button and now we're set up on 40 meters and in 40's case with this particular unit 2589 is where we had the calibration set. That can be changed anytime and you can calibrate against WWV or the internal calibrator in the HW101 or some other signal source that you might have. But it makes it very convenient uh, and very accurate. So when we do change bands, we just hit the band set button or the band memory button here on the on the unit, and then we can uh, turn the frequency uh, change knob here, which in this mode changes the various choices. There's five bands on there, 20, 15, 10, one extra band that we can set any frequency we want in for memory recall, and of course 80 and back to 40 again. Okay. Once you select the band that you want and the frequency choice that was preset the last time that you made a change on that band, you just hit the execute button and you're on that band. So let's go back to 20 meters. There's 20, hit execute, and there we are on 20 back with our minus 760 hertz preset on 20. Okay, let's run up to the sideband portion uh, of the band. Let's go ahead and uh, change to uh, 100 hertz, and then we'll scroll on up to the middle of the sideband portion. Drop back to 10 again.
and I touched mine up a little bit more to the north uh, to uh, compensate. But this band is so... It's in, uh, it's in flux all the time. Yeah, 20 meters on side band. Not a whole lot of activity up here as well. Oh, uh, JKJ. Okay, some, some guys on there. Let's go back down to the CW portion of the band again. By the way, here's the uh, FT8 uh, digital activity. That's strong. Digital FT8, very popular these days. Wow. Alright, scrolling back down. Okay. Yep, okay. So that's how the VFO works. That's how our VFO works. I think it does a great job with the HW 101. So we're going to get into the guts of it here in a little bit and see how we how we build this thing and how we made it work. So our easily reversible connection inside the HW 101 uh, to replace the existing VFO is simple. We're just going to disconnect this RCA cable here, which comes from the output of the VFO, and we're going to run a little uh, coax cable in the back here, which goes to our new external DDS VFO, and we're just going to plug it in. And that's pretty much it. Easy peasy on the inside and completely reversible. The output of this VFO uh, is 4.95 to 5.5 megahertz, and that's what we've duplicated in our uh, DDS VFO. The, the amplitude of that signal is about 5 to 6 volts peak to peak, and again, that's what we've duplicated in our replacement uh, VFO setup, our DDS VFO. Let's take a look at our DDS VFO for this project, very similar to ones that we've demonstrated in earlier uh, videos. It's Arduino based. The code was developed by Ross Keating of theladderline.com. We've modified it for the HW101 uh, actually considerably. Uh, we have our uh, minimalistic version of the microcontroller. The Arduino is right here. It's called an Arduino Nano. They're about $2.50 on eBay these days and it works great. We have the uh, AD9850, that's our uh, frequency generating uh, module. They're up to about nine bucks, nine or ten dollars on eBay these days, but I think it's still a bargain. Two by 16 LCD display, they're about two dollars and fifty cents. And uh, let's see, we have a, uh, a optical encoder here. Uh, you can also use a mechanical encoder, which are cheaper. I got a deal on these some years back for about eight or nine dollars a piece, but I think they're getting a little bit harder to find in that price range. In the back, we have access to our USB port for the Arduino, uh, an in and an out connector, 12 volts on off switch, and a contrast uh, adjustment here for the display. So that is our DDS VFO for the HW101. We needed to add a stage or two of amplification to get our signal level out of the DDS VFO uh, up to the 6 volts peak to peak that we need for the injection into our HW101. So what we did was uh, we've got a great little uh, a wideband RF amplifier based on a, a 2N5109 that was actually designed by uh, W8DIZ uh, Diz and he's got a website at uh, kitsandparts.com I can get this in the picture here and uh, he sells the uh, he created this uh, design and uh, this is a single stage and he sells these very reasonably priced on his website all the parts you need plus a little circuit board or you can also build it just from generic parts that you may have if you have uh, some 2109's or you can buy those as well from Diz or other places okay so we built uh, we have a number of these we've used them in other projects and they work great little broadband amplifiers are quiet so we went ahead and built up one here uh, we actually had this one built already for testing and generic use and uh, we've got two uh, 2109's in, or uh, 5109's here and here uh, we just uh, used all discrete components and just actually built them soldered right onto the, right onto the leads of those uh, of those transistors got some heat sinks on there pretty straightforward but together this gives us about uh, oh, 20 22 dB gain which uh, in this case worked out great with our 6 volts, 0.6 volts uh, signal coming out of here going through these two stages 
I think I've got a 4 dB pad between them. Uh, yeah, just for a little smoothing and a little bit of better loading between those two stages. Uh, that gave us about the 6 volts uh, that we needed uh, to get a signal into our HW101. A nice clean looking sine wave signal at uh, 4.95 to 5.5 megahertz. The problem was though, we had a horrible case of birdies. I mean, we had birdies generated from some sort of mixing products running this guy at uh, 5 megahertz uh, that were mixing with uh, probably the heterodyne stage or something in HW101 and there was birdies all over the place. Uh, it was horrible every every uh, couple of hundred hertz on every band. So that was a problem that we had to come up with a solution for. So what to do? Well we experimented and figured out that if we uh, took the base 5 megahertz signal from this uh, VFO and we went higher with it, say up to 21 megahertz, which is where we ended up, and then uh, got 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 away from that 5 megahertz uh, interfering uh, mixing products that were happening in the receiver at HW101, and we mixed that uh, mixed that 21 megahertz signal back down again with a 16 megahertz crystal in a mixer circuit, would be back at a 5 megahertz output, but we'd be away from those mixing products, and that is indeed what happened. And that indeed worked very well. So after some experimenting, we uh, kind of settled on that. So this is a generic box that we just had laying around. It's just kind of an old uh, PC switch or something, box printer switch, I guess. And we built uh, we built into this a little uh, mixer circuit and uh, those same two stages of uh, 2N5109 amplifier stages. And uh, it works great. We have basically 12 volts in and then an in and an out. So our 21 megahertz comes out of the DDS VFO. We go into this guy, we mix it and amplify it, and we come out about 6 volts peak to peak at uh, the 4.95 to 5.5 megahertz that we need uh, for our uh, HW101 VFO with no birdies. It works great. So let's take a look inside this just real quickly. So here's our little uh, mixer amplifier circuit in all its homebrew, ugly style glory. We come into this little uh, Gilbert cell, this SA612. Uh, mixer circuit. Uh, there's a uh, actually a 9 megahertz crystal here we experimented with early on and decided that the 16 megahertz which is actually connected down here is the way to go to give us that mixing frequency along with the uh, the 21 or the uh, 21 megahertz input from the DDS VFO. So we mix with the 16 we end up with uh, 5 megahertz out approximately and then we go through our two stages of uh, 2N5109 amplifiers here is one here and one here in this case we build them up on a little small uh, piece of uh, 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 copper clad fiber uh, board there and then uh, then we go on out and a little a little series uh, LC circuit here to help tune that uh, 5 megahertz out uh, this is actually designed and built for uh, specifically for the CW portion of the band of bandwidth with this uh, bandpass filter, which is uh, two of those 10.7 uh, megahertz cans uh, that you can get, <coughs> you can still get them, and then tweak them on down to uh, to that five megahertz that we need pass through here. Um, it's the band. The bandwidth is uh, is about uh, uh, three dB down points, about 200 uh, kC. It's about 200 kilocycles. So uh, it's a little narrow. It works great for the CW band or the side band portion of uh, any of the bands uh, and I, you could we could broaden that just a little bit more so it would be kind of a happy medium in between but it works great for me as is also the uh, the entire this entire little uh, section of uh, uh, the mixer and then the two stages of amplification could easily be put inside the same physical box here as our DDS VFO I think that would work okay we haven't tried that yet but in this way with this being external just connected up with cables uh, we end up with uh, VFO being more flexible. This could easily be reprogrammed to use for any other type of uh, VFO mode that you might have in a shack. Okay, we'll make, uh, I think we need to make as much as we can available uh, at the end of the video. We'll put up a link to our website and we should be able to have uh, block diagrams and maybe uh, uh, schematic diagrams uh, available up there and also uh, the code that makes this all work is highly, highly hacked, uh, and it's not professional, but it does work, and we'll, I think we'll go ahead and make that available as well for anybody that's interested uh, in it.